all the VFX shots you can see right now were created using Blender as the main 3D package by Barstorm VFX, a cutting edge visual effects studio that has become well known for leveraging Blender's capabilities, working on great TV shows such as The Man in the High Castle, spending over four seasons right now with amazing visuals. Barstone VFX played a crucial role in the production of the Amazon Prime series The Man in the High Castle, which is based on the novel of the same name by Philip K. Dick. Barstone VFX was responsible for creating many of the show's most striking and notable images, including an alternate history world in which the story is set. One of the most important tasks that Barstorm faced was creating the show's iconic imagery of the United States that had lost World War II and been divided into two occupied zones, the Greater Nazi Reich and the Japanese Pacific States. This involved creating digital matte paintings and compositing live-action footage and CG elements to produce the show's distinctive look and feel. Most importantly, Barnstorm also created a range of other VFX shots of the show, including complex simulations of explosions and fire, as well as more subtle effects like adding digital snow to scene sets in the Rocky Mountains while using Blender as their main 3D package. Barnstorm VFX also worked on many shows and films including Stranger Things, The Order, Another Life, Strange Angel, and Goliath, just to name a few. In addition to many movies including Avatar, Black Panther, Thor, Star Trek, Flash, Batman, The Terminal List, and many more. Barnstorm VFX has quickly emerged as a dominant force in the VFX industry, offering services to major studios in the production of famous blockbusters. And in pushing the limits of what is possible with Blender, Barnstorm VFX has produced some of the most stunning visual effects in recent years. And they did this through a combination of technical expertise and artistic vision. Now, let's explore Barstorm's VFX inspirational story and learn how, by accident, the decisions they made led to them adapting Blender to their pipeline, which kind of make them the leading VFX studio using Blender right now. Barnstorm VFX was founded by Corey Jameson and Lawson Deming in 2011. They met while working on the TV show Ugly Betty, where Lawson led the in-house team of visual effects and Corey was the visual effects coordinator on a prior season. Together, they formed an in-house team to handle the visual effects for the last season of the show. After Ugly Betty, they continued to work as a team for shows such as Body of Proof and In Plain Sight. This was the case until ABC decided not to have in-house visual effects artists, not anymore. At this point, the showrunner on Body of Proof came to them and said that he could only work with them if they started a company and became a vendor. And under this duress, Barstorm VFX was born. Initially, the company was just the two of them, but they would hire a couple of people on a project basis here and there. The company grew organically over the years, but they currently have over 50 employees plus a small cadre of freelancers and remote workers. The challenge for them is balancing what they see coming down with what they have right now and saying yes or no to projects that they feel are a good fit. Their goal has always been to employ people on a full-time basis, as much as they can while hiring freelancers on a project basis when needed. One of the biggest challenges in visual effects right now is dealing with the fact that when a project is on, they need more artists, but during downtime, they have all these artists laying around. Barstorm VFX have been able to retain people on a project-to-project -project basis by hiring multiple talented people. If someone is a solid generalist and can jump on something else, it allows them to have them as an employee more easily because they know they can do more things and work on several projects in different areas very easily. This has been a valuable skill to them because of their backgrounds as generalists. They tried to balance the workload for their employees and they have been pretty good about growing every year. Early on, they doubled in size probably every year, but they have slowed down a little bit of that. They cultivate the people they hire to the best of their capabilities and find a place for them. They also hired based on what they needed at the time. And they realized that starting a company allowed them to do things like actually hire people and buy computers and their company, not just as individuals. It also allowed them to work 
on more than a show at a time because they weren't employees of a studio. So if you want to increase your chances of working for Barnstorm VFX, a good idea is to learn 3D in places such as Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for photography, video editing, and illustration classes, but it actually has many animation, game development, and VFX-focused classes. Have you been eager to learn about geometry nodes lately? If so, I highly recommend this class called Your First Geometry Nodes Project by Bad Normals, who is a popular YouTuber known for his incredible geometry nodes work. This class is made up of one hour and a half of video content divided into 12 lessons. And following this course, you will learn all the principles of geometry nodes in Blender 3 and beyond, allowing you to model things that can be hard to create, such as nature. The techniques and mindsets that you're gonna learn can also be applied to pretty much any node-based software, such as Houdini. Overall, the class doesn't cover a lot of theory and jumps straight to the good stuff. So the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Recently, the company was limited by the square footage of their building in LA, but they expanded their studios to Vancouver, and they are always looking for talented people to join their team, and they have a pretty righteous hiring process, wanting to make sure that people are a good fit for their company and that they are a good fit for people to hire. One thing they value is the ability to self-manage, and they have found that to be an important skill for their artists to have. They also want people who are passionate about their work and are excited to come to work every day. Believing in having a positive attitude and a willingness to learn are the most important qualities for someone to have in order to join their team. Barstorm VFX Studio chose Blender as their main 3D software for their VFX pipeline, but the decision was not a deliberate one, but rather an accident. Corey Jameson has always been interested in visual effects and began teaching himself 3D at a young age. He started with a program called True Space, and later took a class at a visual effects facility where he learned Lightwave 3D. Lightwave at the time was one of the best 3D programs that has been used in the industry to create many visual effects films and TV shows. When Barstorm Studio was founded and needed to use a 3D software for their visual effects, they used After Effects for compositing and Lightwave 3D as their main 3D program of choice. However, Corey found it to be challenging to use as there was not many tutorials for it online, and most of the training programs didn't offer Lightwave tutorials. Additionally, it was not a widely used program at the time because over the years, it lost its momentum and people became less interested in it. So people were more likely to use a software such as 3D Studio Max or Maya instead. Corey then tried to teach himself Maya, which he found very difficult to use. So when they needed more 3D work, they hired freelancers to use Maya. But each freelancer used a custom version of the software, and they all used different software for different aspects of the project. This made it challenging to work with multiple people, and they realized that they needed a pipeline to streamline the process. Meanwhile, Corey needed to do a smoke simulation, and he found that Maya didn't have the capability he needed at the time, so he asked a friend if there was another program that can do it, and they recommended Blender. He downloaded Blender and found it to be very easy to use, especially after the redesign in version 2.7. First of all, to be clear, one of the main reasons Barstorm Studio picked Blender is that it was free and it is free, which is a huge benefit for small businesses. The studio did not have the money to invest in a pricey 3D software, thus Blender was an excellent choice. Blender was also chosen since it is a comprehensive 3D software that can handle every aspect of the production pipeline, especially in VFX. Blender contains modeling, texturing, rigging, animation, compositing, and rendering capabilities, making it a one-stop shop for all the studio needs. This makes working with numerous individuals at the same time on the same project much easier because everyone is using the same tools and can collaborate smoothly. Additionally, Blender has an active community of users who contribute to develop the software. So if there is a gap in the functionality of the software, or if there is a problem that can be solved, or a function that needs to be created, there is something who's gonna create it and solve that problem. 
This means that Blender is continually evolving, with new features and improvements being added regularly. This is a significant advantage for a small company like Barstorm, since they can take advantage of these new features without having to invest in a new software. Overall, it has proven to be an excellent choice for their small company. However, this doesn't mean that they don't use other software. In fact, some of the studio's artists use Macs for modeling, and when it comes to compositing, they mainly use After Effects and Nuke. This VFX studio has faced several challenging problems throughout their existence. However, the most challenging project recently was the production of the TV series The Man in the High Castle. The show required a lot of visual effects and had a massive rendering challenge, which was complicated by the scale of the project. The co-founders mentioned that there were challenges with the pipeline and a manpower challenge as they chose a software that was not taught in schools and was not commonly used in the visual effects industry. Of course, we are talking about Blender. Overall, each project they take presents a unique challenge that depends on the scale of the project, sometimes multiple challenges at once. For example, when the company was just starting, the challenge was to produce a couple of scenes of green screen driving. Later, they faced the challenge of getting early hallucinations on mushrooms on the desert for Silicon Valley. Then they faced the challenge of creating the Volkshaw set piece for the man in the high castle. They often have phone calls where they are asked to do something they are not sure they can do or achieve and they accept it anyway, because they know they can figure it out eventually. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. You can also take a look at some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.